Oswald has a shot. Oswald has a shot. Oswald has a shot. Penn Jones, Jr., editor of the Middleothian Press in Texas and author of Forgive My Grief, Volumes 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. He was working on a book on the assassination uh, with uh, two reporters of the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, mm -hmm. Thayer Waldo and uh, Ed Johnson. Thayer Waldo uh, found it convenient to find employment uh, outside the United States. Ed Johnson went to work for uh, Les Leslie Carpenter in Washington, D.C., who is the husband of Elizabeth Carpenter, who is the secretary to Mrs. Lyndon Johnson. And uh, uh, Jim Cody was killed by a karate chop to the throat in his apartment in Dallas, Texas. His killer was not uh, indicted uh, for, the, uh, for that murder. And the murder uh, stands unsolved. When did that murder take place? In about September of 1964. Bill Hunter was killed in the public safety building in Long Beach, California. Please tell us Bill Hunter's background. How Bill Hunter is a native of Dallas. He and Cody worked together in their uh, early days as newspaper men on the Wichita Falls paper. Mm -hmm. uh, Cody is a West Texas boy and... Uh, Hunter is a native of Dallas. Then uh, Hunter eventually got a job here in Long Beach. He was in Dallas visiting his parents and covering the visit of the president for his paper here in Long Beach when the assassination took place. He stayed to cover the assassination. Uh, and I, the thing I think that got him in trouble is that both Hunter and Cody attended a rather strange meeting uh, in Ruby's apartment on Sunday night after Ruby had killed Oswald. Present in this apartment was uh, George Senator, Ruby's uh, roommate, and uh, Tom Howard, Bill Hunter, and uh, Jim Cody. A meeting in Ruby's apartment? Yes, and three out of these four people are now dead. There, there were two other people present, but uh, uh, neither of them were, n were called to testify before the Warren Commission. One of them said he did not hear what went on in the apartment that night. He said, I didn't want to hear. Uh, his name is uh, C.A. Droby, and uh, he had already been threatened. Uh, his, his family had been threatened, so he withdrew as, uh, as uh, Oswald's first lawyer after the assassination. Well, there were four good male witnesses to the escaping Tippett killer. You see, I do not believe that uh, Oswald killed anyone, mm -hmm. and uh, certainly uh, he didn't shoot a gun that day. Mm -hmm. So when, when uh, the police accuse Oswald of killing Tippett, then we need to go to the witnesses who saw the escaping Tippett killer. Mm -hmm. We'll take four male witnesses. One of them was uh, Warren Reynolds mm -hmm. uh, shortly after the assassination. Uh, Reynolds was shot through the head. He did not die, but uh, he, he, he was so sure it was not Oswald that he was not even asked by the police to go down and view Oswald in the police lineup. Hmm. Uh, after uh, Reynolds got out of the hospital, he, he uh, decided that it was Oswald that he saw escaping, mm -hmm. and it uh, may have been a wise decision. Uh, another one was uh, Domingo Benevides. Benevides was only 25 feet from Tippett when uh, Tippett fell. Uh, Domingo didn't think it was uh, Oswald. In fact, when he was testifying before uh, Attorney Bellin of the Warren Commission, David W. Bellin, Bellin asked uh, Domingo what uh, the escaping killer looked like, and, Bellin, and uh, Domingo said he looked like you. Well, Bellin uh, hurriedly put into the record where he was on the day of the assassination. I would much have preferred that he put into the record what Bellin looked like hmm. so that we'd have a description of the escaping Tippett killer as far as Domingo was concerned. What happened to Benavides? Well, Domingo's brother was killed in a senseless beer hall fight by what appeared to be a rather uh, just a paid killing. Uh, an ex-convict spent 18 months in the penitentiary for killing a uh, Domingo's brother, Edward Benevides. Now, both Domingo and his father-in-law thought that uh, it was just a case of mistaken identity. Hmm. This hired killer simply got the wrong Mexican. Now, the other fellow was named Harold Russell. Mm -hmm. 
Harold Russell didn't think it was Oswald. He was working for the Reynolds Motor Company that day. He and Warren Reynolds rushed out together, and both of them saw the escaping killer. Warren uh, uh, Russell uh, then quit this uh, firm and went back to his uh, home in Davis, Oklahoma, when one afternoon when he went out on a date, uh, went out to a party with a, uh, a lady. Uh, he went out of his mind and started having, I don't know what was wrong with him. Uh, he was crying that uh, people were trying to kill him, and he wanted his friends there at the party to hide him. Well, the friends called a policeman, and the policeman came out and knocked uh, Harold in the head and uh, killed him. Well, I think one of the most important one is is the death of Rose Sharmy. Pen Jones. Rose Sharmy was a prostitute for Jack Ruby uh, in Dallas when, uh, and also she was on dope. When you say she was a prostitute for Jack Ruby, do you mean that she she was one of the strippers out of the club who hooked uh, on the side? Well, if you want to be kind, uh, that yes, if you want to be generous, but uh, there are too many witnesses in the twenty six volumes who say this was a whorehouse. And uh, I don't know perhaps all that, of them. Perhaps that might have been one of Mr. Ruby's sidelines, but, but the place was predominant. The, the, uh, the strip joint was a sideline. The whorehouse and dope was the main business. Out of the carousel club? Yes. Now, now Rose Charmey mm. was in a car with two men going to Florida for a load of narcotics for Ruby on November the 20th, 1963. I don't know what happened, but uh, apparently the two men became unhappy with Rose. They threw her out of a moving automobile. And when the police picked her up, they said it was obvious what had happened. She'd been thrown out of a moving automobile, but she was having withdrawal pains and was screaming that President Kennedy would be killed when he got to Dallas. Now, the police took her to doctors, and the doctors listened to her a little bit and threw her in a mental hospital. And, uh, this occurred November 20th. November 20th, 1963, in Louisiana. She was thrown out of the car near Eunice, Louisiana. A few days after the assassination, the doctors who had put uh, Rose uh, in the mental ward uh, happened to remember her, and they called, sent her, had her back, brought back to their offices, and uh, she had dried out and was normal. And uh, uh, they were reading her some of these... Uh, stories about the assassination and they read to her where uh, Ruby had denied knowing Oswald and uh, Rose laughed and said they were bedmates what are you talking about of course she was killed a, a few months after that how well I don't know why she was walking down a, a highway at 2 a.m. in the morning but uh, she was hit by a car and uh, it was a hit and run an unsolved hit and run and she was quite dead when they got her to the hospital. Uh, Betty McDonald was a, a stripper for uh, Ruby at one time, uh, and uh, uh, when Reynolds was shot through the head, a man named Garner was arrested. Betty McDonald said it couldn't have been Garner. He was in bed with me at the time. Uh, so the police uh, released Garner. A week after this, Betty was arrested for fighting with uh, another girlfriend on the street. The police acted as judge. They only arrested Betty. They did not arrest the other participant in the fight. And an hour after she was placed in jail, she was found hanging in her cell. She's 23 years of age. Rose Sheremy was 40. Delilah Wall was 27. Delilah was uh, a stripper for uh, Jack Ruby. Uh, she left... Uh, uh, Dallas shortly after the assassination and was uh, plying her trade in uh, Omaha, Nebraska when a fellow from New Orleans came up and married to Delilah and 24 days later he shot her uh, dead. Uh, of course, when the police got there, they said he was drunk. However, this fellow uh, hit her uh, seven times out of eight with a pistol. Uh, he wasn't really too drunk when he started shooting. Dorothy Kilgallen is on my uh, list of strange deaths. And I place her there because I only know of four people who had the opportunity to talk to, talk to Ruby or Oswald mm -hmm. alone mm -hmm. after they committed their part in this crime. 
Those four people are Tom Howard. We've already talked about right. the lawyer who died of a strange heart attack in Dallas. In fact, mm -hmm. we don't know it was a heart attack. It was a parent heart attack. Uh, another one is Earlene Roberts, who was the... She swept the floors and made up the beds out at uh, Oswald's rooming house. Mm -hmm. Another one is William Whaley, the man who says he carried Oswald from the Greyhound station out to some point on South Beckley. Mm -hmm. And the other one is Dorothy Kilgallen. Now, these are the only four people that I know who had a chance to talk to either of these two men alone in a room that wasn't bugged after these men committed their crime. Uh, and for that reason, I class all of them in, in the strange death. When did Dorothy Kilgallen talk with Ruby? Dorothy Kilgallen came down to Dallas during the Ruby trial and stayed for a couple of days. To cover for the Hearst Papers? Yes. Right. During one of the noon recesses, she spent an hour and a half in Judge Joe B. Brown's chambers, just she and the judge. Uh, after an hour and a half, the judge came out and sent Ruby into his chambers. So even kept the bodyguards outside the room, the judge's chambers. Uh, she and uh, Ruby were in that room alone for 30 minutes. Now, I don't know what was said. I don't know if anything was said. But I do know that uh, just a few days before her death, Dorothy Kilgallen told a TV makeup man in New York City that in five more days, she said, in five more days, I'm going to New Orleans and break this case wide open. Hmm. Now, I remind you, that was a long time before either you or I, either one, knew anything about Jim Garrison. And uh, for that reason, I include her on my list. Now, I know she told it, them that because when I was in New York being made up for a show, he told me that she told him this. For that reason, I include her. Uh, Gary Underhill was a CIA agent who uh, immediately after the assassination uh, left to Washington and went to New York and, and begged his friends to hide him. He said flatly that he knew who killed President Kennedy and he knew they were going to kill him. Well, he stayed hid up there for uh, several weeks and finally, I suppose, decided that he was paranoid or he was imagining mm -hmm. things. So he went back to his home in Washington and a few months thereafter he committed, they said, he committed suicide. Of course, he was right-handed, but when he committed suicide, he shot himself uh, through the left temple and out on the other side. I suppose, though, when you're shooting, when you're committing suicide, it doesn't matter which hand you use. Former CIA agent. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and Underhill said flatly that uh, the CIA was involved in the assassination and that they were unhappy with President Kennedy over the far eastern wing of the CIA was unhappy with President uh, Kennedy.